Hey everyone, welcome back to another video about Stable Diffusion. Hopefully you already checked out my last video, putting Stable Diffusion into your system with the UI and all that. Now we're going to talk about how to make good images. Since we're working with a model that's not connected to the internet and it's not learning, we have a limited amount of information to work with, so we want to make the most of it. Without going too deep into it, we'll cover the basics of how the images are generated from prompts, and that should give you a better idea of what to type to get the images you really want. I'm no expert, but I've done a lot of experimentation with this at this point, and all of these images you're seeing here have been generated with Stable Diffusion. The most common problem to solve is just communicating with the model, getting it to understand what you really want. One of the first things I asked for was a tank logo, but most of the images gave me tank tops rather than a military type tank. So tip number one is context. The more information you can give it, the easier it is for the system to understand how to give you what you want. It's not that the systems aren't smart or well designed, it's just that they aren't actual artificial intelligence. They work based on context. So give it context. Sometimes less is more, but sometimes more is more. Some of you have already picked up on another pattern right away, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about it, and that is style. If you've been pausing the video to write down these names like they're secret code, don't bother. I'm about to go ahead and crack the code for you. Check out the link in the description for this. It's a very convenient list of artist names with examples of what each of their types of work looks like. And Stable Diffusion recognizes all of them. So almost anything that you type in combined with these names should result in work that looks similar to this. That's one of the first things to get you started in turning something basic into something amazing. Each of these names associates with a different look, and you can see it here, you can see the context. And as we think about context, we think about the information that's in the model, there's going to be some things that there's just not a lot of pictures of. When you ask for those things, the model doesn't really know what to do with that. To give you guys an example, I wanted to think up a query that there really wouldn't be a lot of context for. So, I looked up baby dragon, and as I suspected, there weren't a lot of baby dragons in the model. I got a lot of adult-sized dragons in my output. And worse, I had adult-sized dragons horrifically combined with babies. That was a problem I didn't really expect. So to go an easier direction while giving myself a little eye bleach in the process, I went with a lizard by Pixar. In my mind, for some reason, there was a nest with multiple dragons, so when I saw the second picture, that's the one I went with. And what I mean by that is visual context, because we're going to be going from a text prompt into image to image, which is visual context added to a text prompt. Since we're giving the algorithm this visual context for two small reptiles, essentially, it's easier for the algorithm to figure out what we mean when we say baby dragons. We're still going to get some very cursed images. This is AI after all. But it'll be better than had we started from nothing. The next thing we're going to cover is the basics of outpainting, which is another part of image to image. For the purpose of this video, everything I generated here, I did so inside of Stable Diffusion, aside from my own logo. Outpainting is one of those things, though, that you could actually grab something from real life, a landscape image, or anything you want to add additional context to. If you look towards the bottom, you'll see a scripts option. You should have an outpainting option within your scripts. For our example, we're just simply going to expand in a single direction, a headless photo which is a pretty common AI issue. During this process, drop your batch count to just one. You just want to do these one at a time. Plus, it seems like the script only can do one at a time, or at least saves them that way. On your screen right now are different examples of using different blur, different pixels to expand, different color variations, and different falloffs, all in a single direction. There's a little bit of luck, a lot of playing with the prompts, and some changing around of the settings, but eventually I landed on something that I was happy with. To give you an example. What we're going to talk about now is called denoising. As far as what we're going to be using it for and talking about, you might want to look at it as the amount of randomness that you want to apply to your picture. Going from 0 to 100, at 85% noise effectively, you can see how different each of these pictures are from the original, just using image to image, and the same prompt we were using before. So if you have a picture that you really like, and you want to see it in just a very slightly different style, try dropping your noise down to just 20% and see what happens. If you look really closely here, you're only going to see slight variations, different tattoos, different makeup, but the same weapon, the same outfit. Let's keep the same original photo and try it at 35%, and you can see a much bigger variance. The handle of the weapon in each photo is very different, the tattoos are gone almost completely, and even the art style has changed pretty drastically. Keeping in mind the default settings sets you at 75%. 
So lastly, let's take a quick look at what 55% looks like. As expected, the AI has taken a lot more artistic license. You can see the weapon is almost different in each of the photos. The outfit has changed pretty drastically. The collar is there in some photos and it's not in others. Through this process, and hopefully this is enough to really show you that you can create your own stock photos from nothing. You can start with something very basic and continue to work and mold the photos into something very different from what you started. Hopefully better understanding these sliders allows you to kick out some really random content when you're not feeling as creative. And if you're impressed by this stuff, the best part is we're just on the precipice. A lot of this stuff is only going to get better from here. Now that this is open source and freely accessible, stay tuned as more stuff develops and I'll try to keep an eye on it. In the meantime, I hope each of you have a lot of fun with this, I know I have been. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, thanks for watching.